Um, you might have a neighbor who says, I'm RF sensitive to radiation. You might have somebody in the community that says that uh, your radiation calculations are incorrect. Just leave that out of the discussion. Uh, the ARRL in their presentation recommends that you do the calculation and have it ready should the FCC knock at your front door. That is highly unlikely. In fact, I'd say it's close to impossible. The person that's going to knock at your front door is likely going to be somebody from the city, the township, the county, um, and that's the person that's going to knock at your front door. How do I know that? I was the person knocking at people's front doors for many years. So, and I've had them knock at my front door here within months of arrival and putting up an antenna. With respect to that, real quick, it's better not to answer the door and to let them go away. Uh, the guy that showed up in my case was in a police car. Um, and then take their business card, call them on the phone, um, be friendly, cooperative, don't lie. Whatever you do, don't lie about anything. But discuss the situation with you being in control. They want to come out and inspect your antenna. Okay, fine. Um, you can do it from the sidewalk. Is that good enough? Uh, no, I need to come into your house. No, you don't. I'll meet you at the side gate, uh, but I'm going to be gone for a couple of weeks. Let's set a date uh, in two weeks. Give yourself time to do whatever needs to be done so that when that person walks into the backyard, they see the antenna and they walk on out and that's it. As opposed to, uh, I've got the county records. When was that garage built? You re-roofed the house. A patio cover. Did you pull permits for these things? I see wiring going across the air. That looks like high voltage wiring. Uh, do you have a permit for that? You want to avoid all that. So you control when the person can come to the property and what they can see. As far as doing the calculation goes, as the ARRL has suggested, I do recommend that you do that. However, I would recommend that you delete some information from the solution. And um, we'll get to that when we get to the bottom of the forum and do the calculation. Some folks have been angered by the fact that the FCC has come along and set a new, what appears to be a new limit. It really isn't new, but it's also not worth going to them. Having been a, um, I was a planning commissioner, building code board, fire code board, building code board of appeals. Uh, I held several licenses. Um, I was often the person that was at the five person panel that the that the citizen would come in to, to complain. Um, sometimes it's better to say, okay, in this case, I think it is, and go with what they provided. I don't think there's any margin in us protesting. Let's accept it and go on with it. What people would protest would be things that um, there could be retribution. And by that, I mean, Let's say, and this is maybe a, a bad analogy, but you're in a small town in, on Interstate 5 in California. There's basically nothing to the town, but the town is on Interstate 5 and the speed limit everywhere else is 70 and the city town now restricts the speed limit to 45 and there's no justification for it. So now the sign says 45 and down at that second telephone pole, is a guy with a radar gun and guess what now you go in and you protest and you say hey that isn't fair you don't have any right and you start yelling at the city council well that may be a mistake because they may come along and say oh okay you don't like 45 how about 25 you didn't like 45 we'll make it 25 and the five person panel votes and that's the new speed limit we don't want to go to the FCC and scream too much because they could also say, um, if you don't have, if you're not happy with what we ask you to do, uh, we're going to make it more restricted. 
And in fact, if that person went back to the city council and said, boy, I really hate that 25. Well, you guys have no right. Oh, okay. Next time you go down the road, that sign could say 15. So what have you gained? It's better to just do the calculation. The ARRL has a really nifty calculator. Um, the data can be massaged just a bit and likely you meet it. So let's go through that and see what the ARRL has come up with. And again, I think that the best form to use is the one from the ARRL. And the reason for that is it provides um, a national organization as the background or the support for the calculation that you come up with. And if you have to go to the city council, it's better to use that information. And let's take a look at it. Now, the sad thing is for an organization that publishes, this is not all that well written. In fact, it contains misspellings. I, I don't know who wrote it, but it needs to be rewritten. Verbatim and see what, what we come up with. And I'll do it really quickly and I'll skip a few things. And what it says is it's the RF exposure calculator, which is kind of off the screen. The FCC has changed the RF exposure rules, eliminating service specific exemptions from the need to do a routine RF safety evaluation and replacing those exemptions with a formula that applies to all radio services. See the frequently asked questions and we'll go to that page in just a minute. Uh, and there are uncontrolled um, exposure limits and controlled exposure limits. The controlled would be in your home likely and the uncontrolled would be your neighbors and there's some more details that go with that. To use the RF exposure calculator, fill in the form below with your operating power, antenna gain, and operating frequency depending on how far above ground the RF source is located Boy, see what I mean? No, let's go back up just a second. Um, where it says in the second sentence, RF safety eval evaluation. Uh, that's misspelled. You would think they would have a spell checker. So um, to use the RF exposure calculator, fill in the form below with your operating power, antenna gain, and operating frequency. Um, that really misstates what we're going to be doing, but okay. Now let's quickly take a look at the ARRL's detailed instructions. Just a quick peek at it. And it says, enter the power at the antenna. Um, let's enter the power at the feed point to the antenna. This is the, uh, there's that word. This is the radiated power in watts. Let's just say this is the power in watts at the antenna. And it's also, by the way, not the radiated power. Um, the, the, the power at the feed point is not the effective radiated power. So that's a mistake. For best results, you should account for feed line losses, porous WR, et cetera. And they go into uh, UHF, VHF, and feed line losses that, that we've discussed at length especially with respect to RG8X. Enter the mode duty cycle. Now that's to me a new phrase, but it's the duty cycle for a given mode. They're talking about conversational. I, uh, okay, I'm not sure what that's about, but conversational SSB with no speech processing, 20% uh, duty cycle. That seems to be pretty close uh, with heavy processing, 50%. Boy, I don't know, That's uh, that would be a lot. FM, 100%. Um, again, this is just on transmit. RTTY, FSK, 100%. Uh, CW, 40%. That seems a tad high. Uh, a carrier uh, at 100%. It doesn't show digital modes, but that might be 100%. But we'll get to the the rest of that in just a second. To figure the percentage of transmitting, enter the number of minutes you transmit followed by the number of minutes you receive. Okay, 
enter the antenna gain in dBi as opposed to dBd. So it's going to be 2.15 higher than a dipole. Control versus uncontrolled effective ground. Um, this one you may or may not want to use. So let's go through just real quick the provided table, which is really good for different kinds of antennas. Half wave dipole by definition would be 2.15, but that again is in a given direction. If the person's off the end of the dipole, it may be minus 3 dB. I have a three element Yagi that I think has about 5 or 6 dB gain. They're saying 8.1 because they've taken their figure of 6 dB and added 2 dB. Uh, the hex beam, 5 dB. So the hex beam has about 3 dB gain over a dipole. That probably is close. So you're going to enter that into the, um, to the calculator. So they provided some pretty good information on the parameters for uh, the calculator. Now back to the calculator. Uh, and again, some of this, I think the language could be changed. Power at the at antenna, uh, not the antenna, but at antenna. That could be, um, maybe that would be the power at the feed point to the antenna. So let's say you've got 100 watts. Um, duty cycle. Now, heavy speech processing and SSB, good grief. Um, that would be a lot of speech processing. Um, you transmit for five minutes on and five, I don't know anybody who does that. Five minutes on and 10 minutes for receive. I, I don't know. A net maybe, I don't know, but let's say tr I transmit for one minute and I receive, uh, let's say for two minutes and my antenna has eight dB gain and I'm on 14 megahertz. Um, I'm going to remove the effect of ground, uh, fill in this stuff and say calculate. And here are the numbers. And this is where I think you need to remove some information. Um, in this case, for the controlled environment, safe distance from the antenna, about a foot and a half. For an uncontrolled environment, which would be the neighbors, about three feet. Now, here's where you could get into trouble. Uh, let's look at this line where it says maximum power density now, I know the FCC has provided that information, but I don't want to get into a debate with somebody who says, well, I'm RF sensitive and I can't be exposed to uh, one milliwatt per centimeter squared. Uh, I need it to be half a milliwatt. So I would print the form, change it into a PDF and erase that line. I'd also erase the line that says in meters, most people don't understand meters, and just leave the number of feet. You can print the results. In many cases, you can print it as a PDF. Print it as a PDF. Maybe you can convert it to a JPEG and take that out. Now, let's say you're running 1500 watts uh, back to the top. And uh, you're in charge of a net and you can transmit for a couple of minutes and you receive for four or five minutes and your antenna has 8 dB gain. You're on the top of 20 meters. Um, let's do the calculation. So safe distance in my residence for those who are uh, knowledgeable of the antenna is about five and a half feet safe distance to a neighbor is 12.1 feet. Let's say that that's a problem. Uh, maybe the gain in that person's direction isn't 8 dB. Maybe it's 2 dB. Because of a null in the pattern. Now the distance is 6 feet. And Maybe your transmit times are you transmit for one minute and you listen for four as net control. We do the calculation. 
distance to the neighbor now is about five feet. So if, and again, if you have to go to a meeting where you're talking to the neighbors, I would leave off this number. That could be debated, but it's fair enough to say, I've done the calculation. The safe distance is five feet. My neighbor's 15 feet away. Um, they're um, way below, uh, and again, it'd be the square of the distance, so uh, that person's exposure might be, um, uh, instead of this number, rather, it could be that um, the distance is, it could be that the exposure is way less. Now, let's say that you're not running speech processing. You turn off the speech processor. But you're still at 1500 watts and you're on 14 megahertz, but you're not gonna run your speech processor. Let's do the calculation. Now the distance is three feet or one meter. So again, you may wanna do that kind of calculation. Uh, let's say the person is in the pattern of the antenna. Uh, so instead of it being um, two dB gain, uh, it's, let's say you've got a hex beam and it's uh, 5 dB gain. Calculate distance, safe distance, 4 feet. That's what I think you should keep on hand. Delete the reference to milliwatts per centimeter squared. Uh, that could be a debatable number. Someone from the audience may be a doctor, an environmental health specialist, um, hard to say. But you don't want to debate that number. You may want to take uh, a, model of, uh, a model of the antenna. It's pointed that direction. I've done the modeling. That person's over here. For example, a hex beam, it's really hard to tell which way the thing is pointed. So um, that may be the answer. It's, it's always pointed the other direction. Um, and, and by the way, this is a dispute right now that's on a television station in Florida. So my advice is the FCC is probably not going to knock at your front door. A local official is. You probably don't want to answer the door. Call that person, set up an appointment, be cooperative. Don't lie. Also, don't exaggerate. Um, they don't need to see your station. I'm sorry that... Um, I, uh, I can't allow you in the house right now for whatever reason. They have no right to inspect your station. Um, and it's better that they don't, that they don't do that. Uh, this is the coax that runs to the antenna. Here you go. Again, be cooperative, but also be sensitive to what that person can see, what you allow that person to see. Uh, there are some words I'd like to see changed. There's other words that are misspelled and that's sort of embar embarrassing. I think that the AWRL, AWRL needs to reread how that is written. Uh, there's some sentences that end with prepositions. Um, just for an organization that writes books, I'm shocked at how poorly written it is. Anyway, that's my take on RF exposure. Don't get too upset with it. Work with it. Use it. Use it to your advantage. Have it ready. Delete the stuff that is debatable. Uh, keep the information about how many feet. Leave off the meters and the milliwatts per centimeter that nobody needs to see. I'm Jim W6LG. I'm RF sensitive <laughs> in Rockland, California. 73. See you the next time.